Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for the crypto market recap. Let's hop into these charts, see what the story is and what it may be. And remember, if you're interested in any of the services I provide, please check the links in the description below for both the Discord and Patreon. Okay, so what's the plan today? We're going to be looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum because, yes, we are still short and they have been going great. And we'll take a look at a few other altcoins, but I also want to look at uh, two altcoins and a stock that were suggested uh, by two members for me to look at. So I will check that out for them. And if you're interested in anything like that, please check the Patreon out. Um, if you become a member, that way you can, uh, you know, send me any uh, stocks or crypto you want me to check out and I'll cover them in a video for you if you're interested in my thoughts. All right. So let's take a look at Bitcoin and look at that. Beautiful. So Bitcoin, as we've been mapping for the last couple of days, has been in this bear flag, this bearish consolidation, and we're seeing it confirm the breakdown right so it broke down yesterday and then today it's confirming that breakdown it has about two and a half hours just about to you know try and get bought back up uh, uh back above the rising wedge because we're seeing it's starting to break back into this pattern um if it doesn't it's you know still in my opinion not confirmed to have broken back in until there's another daily candle under this low but as of right now, it's looking very likely, very likely. And this bearish pattern, this bear flag that we were forming for the last couple of days, the whole idea, the whole point of it was to get the fuel to break back down to this support and then eventually break under, right? So it's performing exactly as planned, exactly as we mapped it out. And uh, now we're going to see in the next coming days, you know, how Bitcoin gets to 42K because this is an extreme, extremely likely gets to 42K. And then if it's going to hold it and then find the fuel to get back above the, the rising wedge and try to hold that support again, or if it's going to, you know, break to 42K again and then have a very similar situation of what we just experienced where it does a slow drift higher, making yet another bearish consolidation or bear flag to try and get the fuel to do what to exactly break under that support and get back down to this very powerful support okay this is a very strong support level here okay so we're going to see how this works out but either way you know for us personally the members who are short with me we are in a very comfortable position we're heavy in the money at this point we're just going to observe we're going to watch and we're going to make sure that we're nimble okay so but let's map out just in case should it break back up right because this is the only way in my opinion this is the only way you can be comfortable trading the only way you can be comfortable in your positions is when you map out all the possibilities okay so let's just say today in the next two hours bitcoin gets bought back up and this is totally possible by the way this is not that crazy totally totally possible so let's say bitcoin gets bought back up gets back above the rising wedge the support line here and then holds it for the next coming days to a week right so let's say these next corresponding daily candles are kind of drifting down okay drifting down and holding above this support zone generally so what that usually indicates you're going to have some sort of like descending wedge which is bullish right okay you'll have a descending wedge of some sort and that usually means eventually you're going to get a break higher Okay, so the levels it could get to and still be a, a bearish break, right? Still be bearish overall is here. So at the bottom of the bear flag, pretty much at this support level here, this resistance level here. So here that goes to this pivot over here, right? You, you, I hope that's clear. But yeah, see this line going through here. Okay, so price could definitely get back to that. All right, and then find some resistance and then break down again or let's say price breaks through well the next level it's not going to be this red line not immediately okay it'll likely be this trend line of the bear flag all right because you want to pull this out this bear flag line is still relevant okay 
it's going to be relevant. So if price breaks above this line here, it'll come up to here and then find some resistance there. And then we'll see if it starts a bullish consolidation like a bull flag going back to here, then look for that move higher to the red line and then another fight. OK, so we want to give this time how the structure is going to play out. But as of right now, just know the most probable path is the path to the downside. OK, I know many of the members in the discord, including myself, are invested in crypto for the long term. Um, we all would like for it to go up, but I, I feel it's my duty and I, it's just who I am. I will always give you the cold, hard truth when it comes to the charts because I believe the most comfort you can have is knowing the possibilities and knowing what's most likely to happen, okay? If that doesn't happen, you know, if lower doesn't happen and then we shoot to the shoot to the moon, that's, that, that's fucking great, pardon my French. That's absolutely fabulous. But we don't want to pit our hopes into that because when it doesn't happen, it's devastating emotionally. And, you know, you want to have fun with this, all right? You want to have fun with this. If you're not having fun with it, it's not healthy. All right. Okay. So we're going to break under. And then if it gets to 42K, look for a consolidation. Whether it's going to be bearish or bullish, we'll have to wait and see. Most likely towards the bearish side. Then it'll break towards this line here. I expect this, this line to hold fairly well. Eventually, it's likely to break. And we do test the bottom of this large of the, of the wedge pattern. And we'll see what happens from there. Um, I, th I do believe as well that this will break eventually. And then 33K, this pivot here, will be tested at some point. Okay? But there will be extreme demand all throughout this zone. Okay? There will be a lot of demand here. This is not going to be something where you're going to just see a waterfall through. Or at least you won't see a waterfall through continuously. You'll probably see a big move and then a lot of consolidation through it. Okay, but we'll cross those bridges when we get there. As of right now, we're just going to sit still, especially since we're in a comfortable position in our short and we're going to, you know, stay vigilant and watch what happens next. OK, so next, let's take a look at Ethereum. So here's Ethereum and look at that beautiful. And I do want to go over one thing. So, look, remember I said in the last video that, you know, Bitcoin had a much larger might have been the second to last video. Sorry, but, you know, Bitcoin had a. a had more of a a, a, a a a more larger drop, I guess. I, that might be the wrong terminology of it, but it, it definitely had a bigger retrace. Yeah, a bigger retrace from the 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 red line, this very powerful ascending um, resistance, uh, compared to Ethereum, right? So it has this big, fairly large retrace, and then the bearish consolidation. Well, let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum didn't have that at all. So Ethereum had. Uh, just a fight right so this was just a fight for the past what one two three four five days so pretty much a week to a week and two days right so this had just this small consolidation i would damn say a rest day and then for the next you know three to four days it fought the red line unlike bitcoin where it had a a rejection and then consolidated under ethereum was right at that line and now finally it, it had a, a fairly large denial. And I said in the la that video that you'll likely see a larger move to the downside for Ethereum, a much more pronounced move because of it, right? It, it didn't It didn't have any consolidation at all, really. Now it's having its down move. So that's why you're having about 2% differential between them, as well as that, you know, Ethereum and altcoins usually tend to have a larger percentage move compared to Bitcoin. But this is just magnified based off of, you know, Ethereum really just sticking to this line like like butter pretty much until now. So yesterday had that nice denial. Um, pretty much almost engulfed this entire last candle. And now it's getting that confirmation to break under 3400 and it's it's well it's well under. So it has about two two hours to try and get back above, but again, it can happen. Things up like that have happened, but it's unlikely. Uh, but you know, this is this to me is very likely to get back down to 3000. OK, so for Ethereum, if it does get back to 3000, you know, I would exp I would say there's a much a very high chance 
that we get a bounce. Uh, 3,000 is going to have a lot of demand. You know, again, this is this is in the idea that Bitcoin doesn't just collapse or anything. So it, it's very likely we'll get some some sort of bounce, um, unless unless again it does depend how Ethereum gets to this line. So if Ethereum slowly comes at this line and then just drifts higher off of it like that, that's bearish. Okay, this is a bearish look. This this to me would would spell the doom that 3000 is going to be lost and we're going to come right back down to this level here at 2800 okay so that you don't want to see that what i want to see is tomorrow really just this would be the most bullish bullish case uh, in the short term for ethereum tomorrow uh if if ethereum closes here or lower just come straight down um because if it comes straight down to 3000 you'll start getting the bids here and then you'll have a nice little bounce that probably gets you towards 31 3200 okay and that's what you want to see because you want to do you want to see from that a small bit of bullish consolidation that that ranges down so like a a, a a descending wedge almost so let me see if i can draw that for you so a little bit of a drop like that then a rise like that and then a slow drop like that because then you're going to get the buyers that come in here and it'll tighten up and then it'll come right back up and the resistance I see it stopping at, if it's going to stop, of course, would be towards 3300 and maybe even 3400 again. I, I'm a little skeptical it actually can get back to 3400 but we'll see. But I would not be surprised if it gets to this level here, right? So that's what I'm seeing for Ethereum in the short term. So within this week uh, to the weekend is that we get to 3000 Um, Once, it, you know, if Bitcoin continues its drop and... Uh, Ethereum will follow. So once 3,000 is lost, it's gonna it's gonna definitely want to test out this longer term trend line, this thick black line that's ascending here. This is a very important level. It's a very important level. Look, you know, it's been holding this for a quite a long time, um, since well, since 2020 de December, and technically longer, right? Technically longer. So this is a very important line. It will eventually get back to it, and we'll see if it holds it. Um, I gotta tell you, you know, if Bitcoin starts breaking under the wedge, it's unlikely. It's unlikely Ethereum could hold it, but we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. It, it's very probable that Ethereum gets back to sub 3,000 at 2,800. Okay. Um, and again, you know, short on both Ethereum and Bitcoin. If you're in the trade with me, if you're a member in the trade with me, just remember, you know, be calm. Uh, don't do anything crazy. Do don't don't uh, don't get greedy. Just take your time. Keep your eyes open and be nimble. We're gonna sit in this trade. And we'll see what the market gives us. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a quick look at a few other altcoins. And then we're going to get to the, the coins and the stock that were suggested. Uh, let me take a look at uh, XRP. Because I was also asked, you know, if I can take a look at XRP real quick. And, you know, XRP, again, it's I, I've mentioned this in a few videos. Uh, it, it, it's so rare for this coin to show any follow through. And, uh, you know, I attribute that to the lawsuit that's been going through. Um, but just looking at this purely in a vacuum at a chart it's fairly bearish right all right it's fairly bearish but it's not it's not the worst chart in the world either all right so uh it's at a very strong a very strong support zone all right this is this zone is extremely strong high demand very high demand um so you know don't i do not see any huge waterfalls like big moves happening very quickly but a theory, uh, but XRP, I mean, it's it's in a downtrend, right? It's in a downtrend no matter how much it goes sideways until this line here is broken through. So I drew this line from the pivots from the all-time, well, the most recent high it made, which is about $1.96, to this pivot here at $1.34, $1.35. Um, it, has, it hasn't been able to get to it. it. It has not been able to get to this line. It got fairly close here in this candle here. But uh, it has not been able to get there. And now, you know, this is another, you know, unfortunate uh, term of events for it. Uh, uh, it's a fortunate term of events for it. It does have this trend line rising here. But now we're going to get into decision mode for, for we're going to get into dis decision mode for, for XRP. Is this going to hold or is, is it going to break? You know, and uh, that's... If it breaks, I mean, you're going to be looking at probably a 50 cent XRP at some point. 60, I would say 65 to 50 cent XRP. You know, it, it 
it's in a it's in a really really interesting place. But I I'm really gonna tell you if you want to have an idea of where XP is going, you want to watch Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin is gonna is gonna help either dampen the, the the drop on XRP if it has a drop or just extend it out. All right, because right now XRP is in a non-decision area. There's nothing there's nothing here. All right, there's no indication to go long, and there's no indication to go short. It's 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 literally just nothing. Um, let's draw, you know, let's try and draw this. Let's see if there's a parallel channel because I, I my eyes are telling me there might be. That might help us get a better idea of what can be right now. Let's see. Let us see. Maybe here. Not bad. Not bad. Maybe there. I think that's a little better. Okay. So here's a good idea of what you can see on XRP, right? Look at this. So XRP, you could say, is in a fairly, uh, it's in a fairly large channel, which kind of makes some sense. It does make some sense. You know, it's, it's, I will say this, parallel channels, so this is a bit of good news for XRP. Parallel channels that do descend tend to break higher, right? So that, so channels that are ascending tend to be more bearish in the long run and channels that are descending tend, uh, tend to be bullish in the long run. So eventually this should break out at some point, but right now, it, it, it nothing's changed this just looks like indecision if you should see XRP break out of this channel and then hold it as you know support and starts painting bullish patterns like a a, a, a descending wedge on top of the support well I'm gonna tell you hey you know you got you got something happening here right you have something happening here and in that case you're probably gonna see a dollar plus quickly or at least somewhat quickly um, if it breaks lower well, you have some horizontal supports, right? So you have some supports here at uh, at 65 cents. Yeah, 65 cents is going to be a, a decent support. And then you have some supports here at 55 to 50 cents. All right. If I, you know, right now I'm I am leaning uh, neutral on XRP. I, I have nothing like I have nothing here um, until this channel's broken through at some point or if we get lower on the channel maybe maybe i'll buy the thing is though you know this green zone i painted here is is very 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 um important for accumulation so i do not see xrp uh breaking under this green zone at all and i i i barely see it getting to the bottom of it i i i would think uh bitcoin would have to have we would have to go into a, a bear market and a very a very uh, uh, powerful bear market for XRP to get this low. Um, I don't see that happening. I do see 50 cents though. I, I do see 50, 50 cents to 65 cents being a real possibility. Um, and that would, in my opinion, be a great place to buy. Uh, but as of right now, it's more of a neutral chart. That, that does lean a little bullish, by the way. It does lean a little bullish. I'm just very skeptical because there's just, uh, there's just that... that 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 shadow that overhangs this chart which is the sec so you know you gotta be really careful <laughs> you gotta be really careful because this you know normally news in my opinion doesn't really uh, uh impact charting um and it xrp the chart should pre you know predate the news which it probably will but you know it anything can happen it, a, a tweet can change this as you know extremely quickly so you gotta be a little careful because um, if you get one tweet from, you know, the CEO of Ripple saying one thing or you got, you know, uh, a publication from the SEC saying another thing, this that could be uh, that that could be either a, a huge run up or a huge run down. Right. So you just got to you just got to give it time. I would wait for some sort of technical confirmation. So for me, a breakout, a confirmed breakout of this this channel um, would be good enough. It would be good enough because what that would tell me is there's something happening behind the scenes where sentiment is changing, right? So let's say this is holding, and you have like a, a, a bullish a bullish pattern here, like a, 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 a descending wedge of some sort being formed, and then it finds the fall through, breaks past this trend line, and holds this as support, and maybe even using this trend line here as confluence to hold this as support as it breaks out. Uh, that means 
that you might get an announcement soon, right? Like there's going to be some sort of positive update that comes soon and then it goes higher. That's usually how this stuff works because I've said in past videos, um, there's news for the classes, news for the masses, and you know, you're going to see price action, uh, uh, front run news because people in the know are going to, you know, make their decisions financially first before, you know, it's that simple. Like if you just put yourself in their shoes, if you knew that, uh, Elon Musk found, uh, you know, found the infinity gauntlet, you're going to invest in Tesla. And then everyone finds out a week later, boom, now Tesla's worth a million dollars a share. Stupid example, but you know, it's an example. Get my idea. So, you know, if, if there's going to be really positive news, you'll see breakouts first. Okay. You'll see breakouts first out of a channel like this. Um, and that would be, in my opinion, a fairly decent signal if you're not in a position array to maybe get into a spot position. Of course, you got to be very careful because we have, we have a, an entity that we don't have full uh, view of. Right. Okay. So, you know, I like XRP as a project. It's, probably my largest investment um i'm but i'm very comfortable with it since i've been in it for many for many years um at a, a much lower price but uh the potential here is massive but if you're not in it and you're waiting for a good opportunity my advice would be maybe wait for this channel to break to the upside okay all righty let's uh let's look into look into one of the coins that was suggested uh hnt so I think this is helium. Okay, wow, wow, not bad, not bad. Actually, you know, fairly mature looking chart. Not bad. Um, okay, well, I see something. Well, I see a very important trend line actually. Uh, let me let me see if my eyes are right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. This is big. We're we're. We're in the major leagues, guys. Look at that. So helium or HNT is in a very important place. Okay, this is this is it. This is for all the marbles. Um, this needs to hold. This needs to hold. Um, let's take a quick. Let me let me let me go into a micro view quickly, and then we'll go back out this way. Okay. So we have the the foundation here that HNT is 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 fighting at a a very important zone very important level it's pretty much holding up its bull run okay that's that's this trend line this is the trend line that is the bull run um let me just start from the the all-time high of 59.27 and let's draw from there that pivot to 45.16 and we'll see where we're at yeah okay Oof, okay beautiful beautiful okay so this is likely going to break under Okay, so we're likely going to, and this is going to be a pretty dramatic break. So let me tell you my thinking here. So from the all-time high to this pivot to now where we are. So let me go over real quickly my breakout um, definition. All right, I've gone over this a few times. I just want I want to make it very clear as to how you can avoid this this sort of structure. How you could avoid being this person. Okay, being this person who bought right here. In my opinion breakouts true breakouts that are fully uh, validated are two daily candles that break out from a zone or a level and the first daily candle is the is is nearly a full body candle sort of like this that breaks out and the next daily candle is breaks past the high of the last daily candle here and closes above it all right so this daily candle as we can see look at that it it wicked higher than this one but it closed well under it, all right? If this daily candle closed up here in the green, well, in my opinion, that would be a true breakout and we probably see more upside, all right? So if you wait, if you do with, you know, if you if you view it that way as I do, you wouldn't have bought in this, from this closure, you would have tried to wait for a closure above it and, well, you would have avoided this, all right? So in my opinion, that's what happens. I see that happen more often than not, just saying. So I'm not saying it's, it's incorrect to buy here. Uh, there's plenty of times you want to, you know, as a breakout trader, you want to buy, you want to be aggressive buy in the first candle, the first day of the candle that breaks out. But I've seen this sort of structure, uh, this sort of pattern happen often enough that I, I'd rather just wait an extra day that closes above that previous day. 
So we had a break. We had the beginnings of a breakout, uh, and then it it's breaking lower, and now we're actually breaking back into back under this descending trend line, and we're it looks like we're testing this is very powerful, very important ascending uh, support line here, and we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get some some clarity in the next day or two. Um, I I my opinion, you're probably gonna see some sort of some sort of sideways action here. And then eventually it's gonna it's gonna break lower and try and hold this descending line as support. That's that's what I I'm seeing. And then from there it'll try and test this, and we'll see if it can get past it uh, as resistance. That that's what I'm eyeing. But let's see if there's any other confluence um, to let us know what might be uh, as we go forward. Hold on. So let's take a look at some uh, horizontal supports and resistance. So. Where are we sitting? So here is, so seventeen dollars. So we'll actually do, we'll do some zones. Yeah, we'll do some zones. So right here, sixteen twenty-one, and then we'll do nineteen seventy here. So here's a, here's a, a a larger zone, a larger zone, and it's taking into account over here too. Yeah, okay. So yeah, this is going to be fairly important. Yep. So let's do this. So here's going to be some more confluence of what you want to see held if you're uh, if you're trying to go long here or you are long. So this zone here, very important horizontal zone, it actually makes a lot of sense. It, it almost cuts the chart in half, right? It almost cuts it in half because what what we're seeing is everything below this is essentially just the 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 bear the makings of the bull bull run the bull market move um and then everything above it is the bull market so we're gonna this cuts it pretty much in half the last cycle to this cycle pretty interesting um yeah i would i would actually aim for this zone if i was looking to start a long position i would aim for this zone and then target this ascending trend line as a target to take profit that would be my thinking um the problem is also you have to keep an account that you're going to have to deal with this descending trend line as you go lower and lower and lower. Okay. So all these horizontal supports, you're going to want to, you're going to want to add on to this, right? So you're going to want to add on in this zone, like first buy zone here. And then the next zone, you're going to want to maybe add on here towards $14 would be my, my next target, right? So I would aim for about $14 as my second add-on and then my third to maybe I, I don't see myself I wouldn't add on three or uh, I wouldn't add on more than three times to this because I don't know how large a market cap the HNT is but maybe eleven dollars and thirty cents or if you're willing to hold down through the drawdown to nine dollars that would be a great a great level to buy at because at one of these levels so this red zone to down here what you're gonna what's gonna likely happen is you're gonna get a a, a a period of exhaustion. So you know price will come down, and let's just say it comes up here, fails and comes lower, tries again, fails, comes lower and slows down. So what's gonna happen is you'll probably get some sort of bullish pattern forming around here. So you might you might get so what I tend to, what tends to happen is you'll get one of two things you'll get a massive drop like let's just say it fails right here and it just comes straight down so right here comes straight down to 10 11 or whatever then it pops up hard and starts painting a bull flag right here and that's what it's going to use to try and get the fuel to break past this descending trend line and come right back to this zone here okay so if you do add-ons as you go lower you're you're average entry will be significantly lower than this zone all right and maybe you'll even get a move to the ascending trend line here because this ascending trend line will likely be targeted again as resistance it's a very important line um and uh you could you could consider you can consider hnt somewhat bullish as long as it's above that line it's very similar to ethereum because Ethereum is also holding its macro, you know, a long-term bullish trend line. So, you know, this is something I must hold. So overall, I would say that HNT is 
is definitely in a fight for for its bull you know its bull trend its bull life at the moment but uh i don't see any it is a little tempting to buy here but the only thing that's stopping me is the descending trend line here um and it and it it's failure to confirm above it so you know i i i will say it's very likely this will probably break lower to to these levels at some point um but you should see some nice balance opportunities at these zones here to at least get back to the red zone if it's lost or even towards the rising trend line here. So very interesting chart. Thank you for sharing this one. Um, but consider consider this nearing nearing or at the very end of its of its bull move um, and get ready for possible long entries as it breaks under. OK. All right. So let's go to the next one. Um, M N G O. I'm actually. I don't know. I have no idea what this is. M N G O. Okay. It's on. It's on Kraken. Oh. Okay. There's like. There's not that much uh, info for this one. Let me just see if there's any mango. If there's any other. All right. A little bit more info on the FTX chart. Okay. Uh. All right. There's not that much info here. Um. Okay, it looks like it's just in what I consider a box consolidation. So, this tends to happen. Um, hold on, let's just do it from here to here. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's in it's in somewhat of a squeeze. All right. So, when things, when assets get into a situation like this, um, it's best to be a breakout trader. It's best to be a breakout trader at this point. So there's nothing nothing in this box is interesting at all. I, what I would tell you to do is uh, ignore it and put alerts uh, if it breaks out from the top or bottom. Uh, if it breaks out from the top, it will, it will very likely get to the next pivot zone, which is uh, about right here. So this zone here. Okay. So about 23 to 25 cents. That would be the next zone. And if that breaks... Uh, then it'll get back to 30 cents. Okay. Um, I don't know anything about this, but the chart, this is, uh, this is, a, it's, it's in, it, this is in a bear market. Okay. So like this is, it's correct. It's correction. And now it's in accumulation phase. So it distributed. Uh, okay. And now it's in, it's in, um, it's going into accumulation. So this is going to do nothing. This is going to do nothing. This means nothing. Um, and you, th these are the worst charts, unless you like trading ranges, you know, some, you know, there's plenty of strategies that work in ranges. Um, but if you, if you don't, um, then you want to wait for some sort of, some sort of breakout here. So if you're looking for a bigger move, you have to wait for a, a breakout. Um, you, the reason why you also don't want to buy, you know, long the bottom of the box or short the top of the box. Uh, for me, the risk reward is just so, so bad. It's not worth it. Because if you have a breakout here, the probabilities are extremely high. It's going to it's going to the next pivot level. Um, the probabilities are fairly low, uh, not or at least not high enough for my liking. And we're talking maybe a little a little over sixty percent that it holds one of these levels, right? So if it, let's say it comes down here and you want to open long, I last I checked, you're you're looking at about like a 62 percent chance it holds. All right, that's not horrible, but that I, I don't like that. I'm aiming for higher personally. But uh, if you're okay with that, you know, that's fine. But be careful. If it breaks lower, well, you have air. <laughs> There's literally nothing here. So <laughs> you're, you're going to have to wait and see and hope that it forms a bottom quickly and not, you know, not another, you know, eight, nine cents away. So, but it's, it's interesting enough in the sense that this is a great example of, you know, accumulation. So if you want to see how, you know, how the, this sort of structure uh, works, um, I would keep it on your watch list and watch it from time to time. It's very boring, but these are often, I will say, I will tell you this, these are the best accumulation phases for investing, right? So if you know Mango Protocol, I don't know anything about it, and you believe in this project that this has a, a real function, a real utility, and will find value in the future, this is the absolute best time to buy, right? This is the best time to buy over time um, when it's boring, where you can barely look at it before you yawn. This is the best time to buy something like this. But if you, you know, if you're just looking to trade it, then no, I would tell you to wait. It's not time yet. So overall, right now, 
this isn't in anything. Um, let me just check if there's any saying trend lines. It's probably yeah, it's all irrelevant at this point. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing here of relevance anymore. Uh, let's try this from this pivot and see. No. Yep. So again, see, it's had this. It broke above this, but again, you want to keep it to account. Price action. Look at the volatility. There is none. <laughs> it's very very little. Very, very low, at least compared to you know crypto in general. So just wait and see how this box plays out, this rectangle. And then if it breaks out, get ready for a nice move. You know, and something like this, the longer it's in this, the more uh the more uh, velocity it'll have when it breaks out or breaks down. Okay. So you know, if it's in here for months and months, when it breaks out, it's gonna be massive. It'll probably break well past 25 cents, maybe even past 30 cents. Okay. All right. Um, and let's take a look at that stock that was suggested which is uh crm uh, which i know salesforce yep and let's take a look salesforce okay all right yeah it's, it's probably gonna go lower just saying <laughs> just saying um yeah so let's start let's start with this trend line here so it'll hold there'll be some support here so you know, if you're, don't worry, there will be some support here. This trend line will hold for a little bit, um, but it broke this low at 201.51 pretty decisively after this this consolidation, this bearish consolidation over here, um, and now it's now it's going to be testing to break under this trend line. I think it has some time to go. Uh, let's just see how did today today was pretty yesterday and today were pretty rough on it it gapped down pretty hard um i would i'm i would actually be aiming for this to go here to 170 to 168 um 170 to 160 we'll give it a ten dollar a ten dollar cushion that's 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 where I would see this being the most attractive to start a long position or uh, to start buying it. So getting anywhere from from where it is to this uh, general zone would be very attractive. Um, it is it is approaching it is approaching um, a, su a support here at 195. So if you want to start a position, this is not too bad. Okay, this is not too bad, but it it is. It is very likely to go lower just based off of what happened here to here. So this broke under, um, and the the failure the failure to to really have a definitive breakout from two seventeen thirty one um, is showing. So what I mean by a definitive breakout, you didn't have much follow through once it broke past two seventeen thirty one. From there, it started consolidating. And then in the in the consolidation that could have been bullish, right? This could have been a bullish a, a bull flag. It failed. Um, this failed to break out. So let me just try and show you what I'm seeing. So right here was a bullish consolidation, or uh, like a bull flag that was somewhat forming here. Okay. And then with this gap up to this candle, it failed to have a definitive breakout the next day. You see how it gets kind of gapped down a little. And then it failed to hold the bull flag. It tried. It tried. It came back, held it with these two candles, tried to have a breakout, failed again, and now broke under. So this is a, a, a failure of the bullish consolidation, and it's likely going to come back to test this trend line. And usually in that scenario, they break. The trend lines tend to break. So we'll see uh, in the coming days to you know week or two. Um, it has some supports here, so there will be demand. Again, if you're interested in going long this, um, you, you have some key levels here to start a position. You could start a position, but be in the mindset you're very likely going to add on down here. And if that's lost, if that so that one that level's lost, look for 160. This is going to hold really well, actually. So 160 is that likely to hold very, very well. This is a very interesting spot right here. Okay, and and 148. Ooh, yeah, that's nice too. So this, yeah, this is nice too. So this, there's going to be a lot of demand down here. Okay, and my target, um, the the best zone to buy from here. 
So if you're buying all down here, let's just say you're doing add-ons there, you're gonna wanna aim for either this horizontal uh, resistance or this rising trend line, okay? You do wanna keep into account a few things, of course, like, so let's just say you break out and you get towards here um, and you start getting some sort of bullish consolidation. So let's just say, um, let's see if I can do this correctly. Not really an artist, so apologies. So let's just say, it, comes down from one comes up from 147 and and it comes apart and then it starts a consolidation like this uh don't don't aim for the 195 anymore aim for the rising trend line okay so like that that's giving you uh uh the opportunity to start aiming higher if the bullish consolidation is forming here and then it'll likely break past gang to this all right if it comes if it's just a straight shot like a very rapid shot um, I would I would aim I would aim for the horizontal uh, level the 195 um, because you know the more the more it rises quicker the faster you'll get to like an exhaustive period okay so you know again it also depends on how long you want to hold it but right now I would be looking for longs but you're not there yet in my opinion if you're really aggressive and you really believe you could go for the 195 level but i would rather just wait until you get to the lower levels but you know salesforce again it's fall it, it nasdaq is gonna um <clears throat> is gonna it's, it, it's gonna it's gonna follow the tech the tech sector okay like it's just gonna follow tech sector and you know let's take a quick look at uh at what what's going on with nasdaq right now um let's look at the cues real quick I mean, yeah, look at that. You know, it's the it's same thing. Broke that pivot. So broke so broke this pivot with this one here. Made a lower lower low, lower high, lower low. And now it's making, I would say that's a double top, right? That's a double top. And now it gapped down today. So it's like, you're, it's bearish. It's bearish. You know, there could be some bullish momentum if this zone is held because you might get like an inverse hen shoulders here. But that also means we're likely still see some downside, right? So keep that in mind when you're charting um something like salesforce but overall you know very very nice um chart for salesforce uh and a, a very bullish you know it's, it's a very bullish company it's, it's one of those things where it's like it's a very valuable company um but it is overvalued still so just <laughs> it is technically still overvalued as most companies are these days so just look for lower levels anywhere from 170 to even 148 Okay. All right. And uh, I think that's it. We've been going on for quite a while. So I'm going to leave you all here. Um, I just want to say thank you again, you know, for watching the content and, you know, providing me, uh, providing me comments. And again, please, if you see any possibility of improvement for me, let me know. And if you are interested in any of the uh, products or, you know, uh, services I provide, uh, check the links in the description once more. And uh, always remember, to be vigilant, be patient, and be nimble. Love you guys. Take care.